All right, well, welcome everyone to uh, this evening's leadership workshop. We'll keep letting people in as, as they arrive. Um, just as a reminder to everybody, we are um, going, we are recording this and we'll share this recording later for those who couldn't make it or those from other teams who want to benefit from the workshop as, as well. Um, this evening's workshop is, is focused on um, vision and goals. And so some of these topics, uh, some of you may have seen before, and some of these topics will be brand new for everyone. Um, but just as, as a reminder that, that based on your level of experience and your familiarity with this content, um, we each have different roles to fulfill this evening. And so um, some of the information, like I said, might be, might be familiar and some will be new um, in, our, in our breakout rooms and, and when reporting out. Um, you get to uh, those of you who who have seen some of this and are a little bit more experienced um, can share your your experience and model the behaviors we're looking for, um, but also leave room for for newer members to to uh, try these ideas out and and stretch and share their thoughts um, as well. Um, for this session in particular, it, it certainly doesn't end tonight. Next Monday, the captains uh, will be leading. Um, a, a goal and measurable goals uh, leadership workshop as well. And so that will certainly be an opportunity to apply much of what we've learned, especially tonight, but as well as throughout this, this series. So at this point, um, I wanted to uh, welcome um, Mr. Gupta and Ms. Kama, and they're the two who will facilitate tonight's leadership workshop, and I'll let them take it away. Can you hear me? Okay. All right, and you can see my screen as well. Yes, All looks right. great. Good stuff. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining on a Thanksgiving week, and uh, good to have you guys. This is a workshop on vision and goal setting, and um, I'm Shikhar Gupta. Um, you know, I work with a cybersecurity firm as a customer success leader. So part of all of these things uh, which we've been talking about is obviously things we apply both on personal and professional life. And uh, with me is Shritu, and uh, I will let her introduce as well. Hi, everyone. Uh, again, thanks for joining. Very excited for the session today. Um, I've been on the mentor with the team last year and this year. So many of you know me, but some of the newer folks. Um, I uh, also am leading the customer success organization for a management consulting firm. And, Again, happy to share some of the ideas around setting visions and goals and how um, some of the other organizations think about it and bring some of that experience in the session tonight. Uh, so looking forward to this. All right, thanks, Ritu. So, um, you know, from the beginning, of course, this is a vision and goal setting. So let's set some goal for what we are trying to achieve here as well. Um, of course, the goal of the workshop is part of the leadership session or series, which is setting some foundational skills for everybody to follow as part of Husky Robotics to make it successful. And part of this workshop is, of course, to also set that same foundation when it comes to setting vision and goal. Um, and for you to clearly understand them, not only understand them, but define them. Uh, as well for Husky Robotics and uh, what are some of the tools or approaches you can take both as a leader and part of the teams, um, because that is exactly what will make Husky Robotics achieve their goals and be successful in the long run. So <clears throat> based on that, you know, why do we need to have a uh, vision and goal? And then this goes back to, again, the whole leadership series, which is happening is uh, that some of the things you need to, uh, are key to success, uh, both as a team and leader is to have an end in mind. Uh, of course, that end comes with what is some could be aspirational ends, like what are you trying to achieve regardless of this year or four years down the line? Uh, and what is the overall vision we want to have? The others are both, uh, others are more specific to goals you do want to achieve in this year, uh, some of the success uh, you want to achieve, but then what are the, some of the foundational aspects uh, you want to set so that you can inspire the teams, you can inspire yourself as well for success, for success. And that is what really builds a strong culture. 
and we will talk about you know what is a good culture bad culture and how does culture really comes as part of any team or organization it's not something you you know define or lay out but it's if you follow all of these patterns then uh, it naturally comes uh, as part of the daily life so of course you know without a vision and a goal you can't really achieve a success uh, and which is what is critical to defining as we walk through some of the uh, discussions so when it comes to you know these there are so many terms which we are which are used vision mission you know goals objectives strategies um, and we obviously talk about culture so you know what is the difference and how do you what we think are def definitely are Husky Robotics visions uh, and all of these definitions. So I know some of you have entered, attended, attended the session in the past and have uh, some understanding of these differences between that. So I'd like you to share your thoughts. What do you think are the differences between that? Are, you know, maybe club them together. What is the difference between a vision mission versus goals? Uh, what do you think of value is versus culture? Um, so just whatever thoughts come to mind, you know, feel free to share that through the chat. So at least let's have a base understanding what everybody thinks. Now you can click on the chat and share any anything that you want to define. Yeah, vision is ideal for the future. Good point. Any other definition differences people know of? Yep. Thanks, Simi. You're on the right track. Right. Goals can be easily defined, feasible in the new feature. That's a good point. It should be feasible in the new feature. Then there are smart goals, as we'll talk about it. Um, vision is for the future and specific goal and quantities. Goals are measurable. I think all of you have a good underst or base understanding, I would say, which is really great to see. And um, I think it will help in clearly laying out some of the foundations we want to talk about. So, of course, this is uh, the Husky Robotics has been doing this for a while. So, nothing should be uh, new, but it's always critical to clearly understand these terms and differences so that you can uh, put that in your behavior and beliefs on a daily basis. So, so, so great points, thanks for sharing. Uh, and I think it lines with what you guys have already shared in the chat is that vision uh, difference between this is the going from the, the level of, you know, why you're doing this to the, what are the things you want to achieve and how you're going to do it. So, of course, starting with the vision, and you have seen this for many organizations that vision is really a very aspirational. It is something which is almost like a guiding beacon to define, you know, have the underlying basis for making decisions and, and setting the direction. So everything you do will be around that vision. And this should not change over time, but then of course it can be defined, but doesn't, it should not change uh, when you set a vision of path. And then mission is where you, what you're trying to achieve now, how are you going to do these things? Uh, and the how is very broad. It becomes a little bit more defined and uh, more outcome-based, uh, setting a roadmap. And then you start getting into the what, as in you're defining the goals. A lot of you shared that these are specific and measurable, uh, achievable in the near future. So things like that, which becomes, make them smart. Um, and the definition of smart, we you all know, but we'll talk about it later as well. It's measurable, achievable, things of that nature. And then you get down to specific plans and tasks you do to achieve a certain outcome. So in the next year's you know, competition, when you get that the, the theme, then you will start to have some of your objectives. You'll start to set some goals. Um, you will have broad goals, but when it comes to the actual competition, you will have broader strategies, you will have tasks and action items coming out of it. Uh, but uh, next year's uh, competition is not going to change your vision or mission. It's, it's going, that's going to be remains constant throughout what you're trying to achieve um, as a team. 
So when it comes to those kind of uh, definitions, these are really uh, setting the foundation of what levels they are. Sometimes you might see that goals, objectives are not a broader and goals becomes really a bit more smart. Uh, sometimes you will see that flipped, but this is just a general guideline. Don't, you know, don't be too uh, tied down to that. It, this is exactly how it should happen, but there should be clear understanding what the differences are. So one of the examples we, you know, we can take is that uh, if you say you want to create the best robot in the world um, and you want to ha achieve a shooting accuracy of 40% and build a prototype. Now, I just quickly in the chat, I want to ask, you know, do you think creating the best robot in the world is a vision or a mission? Which one do you think it would classify that as? Okay. Some of you are saying vision. And again, there's no right or wrong answer. My perspective is, you know, it could be it could be a mission as well, because you're defining how you want to create the best robot in the world. But a vision could be that something you are trying to create as a uh, as a broader vision of saying you want to be uh, create the best STEM program uh, through robotics uh, in the in the in the your school district. Let's say that could be a vision. And how are you going to do it by creating the best robot in the world, right? Because the best robot has to continue to evolve over time. So again, it could be a vision because you're trying to say that is what you're trying to define, but it could be a, a vision could be even much more aspirational because once you've created the best robot, you will still have to continue to do that. Now let's take that quickly on the improving the shooting accuracy by 40%. Do you think that's an objective or a goal? Campbell is saying objective, goal, goal, yeah. So here's a slight, slight difference between objective goal as I uh, define it. Objective is, is broader, while a goal has a very specific outcome. You have a very specific metric. So we talk about goals being smart. So because you're talking about shooting accuracy by 40%, that becomes a goal. Your objective could be, you know, increasing the efficiency of, uh, of a shooting you know, range or accuracy uh, that, and then that becomes a goal of by 40%. Like you say, how much do you want to define it? Same thing, building a prototype to define the shooting mechanism. Now it could be the overall strategy could be that we want to improve the shooting, uh, shooting mechanism. And one of the tactics we're going to apply is create a prototype. And when that prototype is successful, then we create a, a, a full scale model of the shooting mechanism, right? So those are some of the ways to think about it. Uh, like how do you go step by step to create it more and more specific and tactical as you go further down the chain? So same thing on the next example, you know, like creating an inclusive team. Now this could be part of the vision, right? You know, we want to create an inclusive team. We want to create the best talented team, uh, which are again through the STEM program or robotics. Um, Increase compassion and empathy. Now that could be a value, to be honest, but you know it could be more of an objective uh, based on it because now we are not down the track of robotics as such. We are trying. We are part of what the program is trying to build leaders and the leadership uh, aspect within everyone. So uh, attend servant leadership workshop. Now that is a tactics. Now the strategy could be uh, conducts uh, leadership workshop series, and as part of that, you have the six. Um, cities coming up and th those six things or cities or each workshop becomes a tactic for you to attend because the broader strategy is to have leadership workshop, which then ties to the compassion and empathy objective, which goes back to the overall vision. So that's how you should think about, again, how you uh, connect the dots between all of these different uh, terms and objectives. So what what uh, there's you know we talked about vision mission uh, objectives plan but um, you have all heard about culture when it comes to culture within even uh, organizations of course but culture within a community culture within a country uh, a team so uh, and you have seen most companies will not really have a clear definition for a culture because what happens is that culture comes naturally within. Uh, certain teams and organizations. And that comes naturally by having a very clear definitions or terms for the vision, 
mission and the values. And uh, we'll talk about values as well. Like what is values, uh, which a lot of you are familiar with, but it's the, basically the beliefs you have as a team. Uh, and how do you conduct yourself on a daily basis? How do you treat each other? Uh, and how do you make everybody feel part of the team so you can achieve that vision and mission? Uh, so basically values are driving your organization culture uh, or at least part of it. And uh, it is setting the framework for making decisions some of, uh, in many of those cases. So a clear vision, a clear mission, and a clear set of values, uh, first of all, that has to be defined and the team needs to make sure they're understood and following it on a daily basis. Then only you will have a very strong culture. So you've see, heard about companies which will have a really toxic culture. And why is that? Uh, it could be for many reasons, but it could be probably that they might have and have clear definitions, but none of the team members or that as a team, they don't follow it. So if you don't follow it, you're not really following your values. Nobody understands the vision or mission, even though they're defined, you will end up with a very haphazard way and of course a toxic culture. Now on the flip side, you will have companies or organizations which will have a great culture, but they're not successful. Why? Because they will have all of these vision, uh, all these clearly defined, maybe they are all following their, uh, the core values, but we'll talk about in the next half is that they may not have a good set of goals or good set of planning and mechanism to execute on these uh, defined vision and mission. So, you know, both are important, right? Uh, so culture again bec becomes part of your beliefs uh, and, uh, and behavior. It is typically the, that social, psychological environment of an organization, how do you work together uh, and any misalignment leads to a negative impact. So, so this is why it's important to have a great uh, definition and follow it on a daily basis, right? So <clears throat> we talk about values, um, but uh, uh, this is a little bit uh, busy slide, but the part of here is to de define examples uh, for you. At the bottom left-hand corner, we have certain terms which we have seen from the servant leadership workshop, I believe, which was uh, you guys had shared that, what are some of the definitions of uh, a servant leadership? And to be honest, servant leadership is embodying the values of a organization of a team. So in in way, it's not just the leader, but every team member needs to clearly understand those values and, and uh, uh, embody them on a daily basis. And here we have taken an example of LinkedIn, which is uh, believed to have great culture, uh, which again has is derived from the values they have, uh, making sure that they, every member seems part of it. They are uh, integrity, integrity is followed by being honest and constructive. Uh, so always strive for excellence. You know, be open to taking risk. Uh, again, you know, you're defining that together. Uh, you act like an owner. By that, we mean that you own the, the task and the issue at hand. You don't say, this is not my, uh, my job or this is not my role. Uh, even though you need to be focused on your definition, uh, role and task, you still make sure that you are supportive or at least you find a solution or help find a solution, the right person. So Husky values, uh, as which we has been defined here, is again, focused on inclusion, sustainability, you know, developing leaders as we are doing through these cities, but also uh, how we define such a broad team, have team leads and uh, encourage everybody to be part of it uh, and being professionals, of course. Uh, so this also gets extracted from what the first core values are. And these are the list of uh, first core values. You might have already seen that, um, you know, having a innovative mindset, uh, discovering, uh, new ways or solutions. How do we make uh, impact? How do we impact the world essentially with by doing these uh, innovative uh, combinations and approaches? And we are all, all inclusive. We care about each, each other and embrace each other. Work as a team, and of course, you know, have fun as we're doing it. Enjoy, because this is really how you will um, make this as a passion. So. Um, a lot of these examples are there, but let's also talk about examples of uh, vision and mission. And then probably we'll get down to, of course, the examples of uh, Husky Robotics as well. So this example, again, vision example, uh, you know, 
we talked about how it is aspirational and not necessarily smart. It's not has a specific goal. LinkedIn defines as that creating economic opportunity for everybody, you know, within the global force. So if you can see that vision, uh, just like Husky Robotics or anything, for LinkedIn, it's it is not talking about the application. It is not talking about networking. Uh, it is not talking about anything which it does as a product or a company. It's simply saying, what is the guiding vision for us? So it is to create economic opportunity. It it does not tell how. And uh, you look at first to transform our culture by creating a world where science and technology are celebrated, and Young Bank becomes science and technology leaders. Again, it does not talk about robotics. It does not talk about STEM or anything. I mean, it does talk about science and technology, but it's simply saying we want to create a culture and create leaders in science and technology, right? So you can get the idea that this is, again, not the how, but a very distant future or what is the overall vision for us uh, as an organization or team. Same thing around vision. Now we get down to a little bit of the how, right? So now taking the example from LinkedIn, uh, the vision was creating economic opportunity. Now, if the mission is to connect the world, world's professional to make them productive and successful. Again, it is not talking about the, the application itself, but now definitely gets down to saying, how do you create an economic opportunity for everybody? By connecting them and being able to make them more productive uh, in networking or sharing ideas and thoughts. And that's where I think then you get down to the next level of how do you, the objective, like create a, application which will help connect them, uh, provide trainings, you know, provide networking you know, capabilities. So that gets down to specific areas which you see on LinkedIn. Same thing for first, you know, while it was inspiring it, by now it's saying create a mentor-based program. Uh, it's talking about uh, creating innovative and foster well-rounded life capabilities, self-confidence, leadership capabilities. So it is getting down to a little bit lower level of let's Define not only we had defined this, but let's down, get down to the exact programs. And this could be even much more broader. Some companies have mission statement, which are almost like a one page document because they want to be very specific about what they want to do before they get down to specific outcomes, right? So we will talk about a number of uh, these areas which are specific to Husky Robotics. But uh, uh, another example, I think, which I want to share is uh, because probably everybody um, hears them in the news but and knows about it. Uh, Tesla's, you know, vision. Does anybody knows Tesla vision? Can somebody write that on the chat without searching? Obviously, you don't have to remember it. I just want to see if you guys can think what Tesla vision might be. And here for a second here to see if somebody has it. Okay, so Tesla's vision is to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. Yeah, to create sustainable products for the future. So that's good. So that's that's related to again that vision. If you see, create uh, uh, the actual vision is accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. It is not saying create sustainable energy, um, uh, new sustainable energy approaches or or uh, solutions. It's saying X related. So first of all, it says X related, and it says sustainable energy. It does not talk about cars. It does not talk about solar panels. How they're going to do it? It's simply talking about that's our vision, and their mission is to create. Then they get down to the Tesla car itself because Tesla does more than that. But at least for Tesla cars or automotive, is to create the most compelling car company of the 21st century by driving a world of transition to electric cars. So now it's getting down to a mission that it wants to create uh, electric cars and also uh, create a very innovative company in doing so. So that, that becomes a little bit more specific when it comes down to the mission of the company. So um, let's get down to now Husky Robotics. Uh, when I was uh, you know working with uh, with uh, Mr. Schmidt and Ritu that, you know, what is, is there a defined Husky Robotics vision, mission, and uh, values? Of course, we have values, but do we have a vision and mission? Or do we need one? Maybe the question is, do we even need one? Because First Robotics has it, FRC has it. Do we need to have a separate one? 
uh, doesn't need to be that specific, but I took the liberty of saying at least let's let's start with one. This is just a baseline for us to say this is what could be. So if you could see the 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 approach we took was uh, just saying as a vision, nothing to talk about robotics, create confident leaders, encourage innovation, and uh, passionate dreamers. By passionate dreamers, you can think of new ideas. You're not just bound by what you need to work uh, on a competition or you know as an outcome you can go create other things uh, and lead that and innovate. And then when it comes to the division mission, it's, it, it is a little bit overlapping with the values, but at least it's defining that we want to create a world-class robotics program uh, and encourage uh, diversity and inclusion and sustainability to you know, the STEM family. So it becomes a little bit more specific. And of course, we went through the values. So, so we, maybe we don't need one, but the point idea is that uh, as we grow as a team, as we grow the program, uh, it becomes more and more, uh, if the more people understand and uh, have this on a daily basis, it will help you create a goal, great culture. So what we want to do next is just uh, probably have a breakout session. And as we have gone down through this uh, various definitions, and I, I gave you an example of what a Husky Robotics vision, mission, value should look like. Uh, what we want to do is think about, you know, what are some of the examples or how will you may, maybe even enhance this, how, how you may want to change this, come up with your own ideas of what uh, could be a difference between the vision statement and values. Uh, actually, just focus on the vision and mission values. Uh, I think more or less we understand each one of them. So Mr. Smith will help us break out into sessions and then when, what we can come back uh, we can see how you guys have defined the vision and mission examples for Husky Robotics. All right, I'm going to make sure, um, I wanna be able to put that in the chat for everyone really quick. I'm trying to share just that what last slide so that everyone can reference it in their- Okay, um, yeah, that's a good room. And so let me throw that in the chat. I think this will work. Maybe. Hmm, maybe not. Uh, some people look. could choose to take a screenshot at this moment. Yeah, let's do that. Because I'm trying to put an image in the chat and it does not like that. So. Mm. Yeah. All I right. Guess. So take your screenshots and I've got the rooms here ready to go. Um, so this will be a, a five minute breakout. Just as a reminder, that means there's four minutes on the, the timer, but then you get 60 more seconds to wrap up your discussion um, once those four minutes expire. So don't don't feel a need to rush. All right. I'll get the rooms open and here we go. All right, everyone. Welcome back. All right, great. So uh, to wrap up this uh, section, then uh, what I'll encourage everybody is to share, uh, one person from each team can share it on the chat window, what they have come up with provision in the mission, if they have you know modified or enhanced it, but I will just randomly invite one or two teams to share uh, their thoughts. Um, so between, uh, let me see, Andrew, Jesse, Samika, Simi, could one of you guys uh, share your thoughts on vision and mission for Husky Robotics? Yeah. Um, so we kind of said that there's our mission is that um, we want to create this family um, in Husky Robotics and inspire others and help each other learn. Um, but also we want to... Um, go to worlds and things like that and do well in a robot and have sustainability with knowledge in our team as well. So yeah. very nice. Was that uh, were you calling that as a mission or vision or mix of both? Kind of a mix. Kind of a mix. Which is fine too, by the way, I would say. Uh, if you see some organizations, they might have a they might call it vision and mission because it's just sort of blended in. And that's fine as long as it's very defined. Um, somebody has their hand raised. Yeah, um, Go ahead. so um, we were 
thinking, uh, my group was thinking of, with the mission, making it a little more geared towards the fact that we're a robotics team. So keeping the inspire every student to be confident leader, courageous innovator, um, and passionate dreamer in STEAM and beyond. That's a great idea. I think you should share that. But I think I, I, I like the idea of making it more specific to robotics because it has to get down to the how, right? Just like the Tesla example of uh, system and energy, but it then get, get down to electric cars. Make sense? Adam? Let me get the screenshot up here because we made an edit, but uh, we liked the vision. The mission we felt could use a couple additional things. So most of the same, create world-class robotic program to cultivate passion for STEM and first, emphasize diversity, inclusion of all people and ideas and all that. Mm -hmm. But at the end, we wanted sustainability of our future environment and the future of our members. Sort of like. Very nice. Yeah, you're, you're making it more specific to um, both as a team and for the impact of the world. Great, so uh, great examples, guys. I mean, again, this shows that uh, as a team, we can continue to evolve this, um, make it more specific to Husky Robotics. So definitely uh, share it on the chat and also separate on the ideas you have. I think this will help make this uh, this version even much more better uh, as we, I think Mr. Schmidt, we can take the outcome from this and make it uh, shared with the rest of the team. Awesome. Thanks, so I think we can move on to the, the goals and uh, planning session with, uh, go ahead, Mr. Okay, what I'll do is I'll uh, share my screen. And let me know if you can see it now. Are you able to see my screen? Yep. Awesome. Okay. So, uh, so we talked about the vision and the mission. Um, vision is more around, you know, setting a broader uh, vision for the team and vision typically doesn't change. Mission getting to a little bit more specific of, you know, again, still, uh, why and what we're doing, but getting a little bit more specific. Now we're thinking about, now we're talking about making it even more specific and talking about goals, right? So goals are, as, as uh, Mr. Gupta was saying, you know, you can have the great mission and vision, but if you don't connect it to what you actually want to do, um, you know, many companies uh, end up failing at that level, right? So that's why we're having this conversation about well, what does it mean to have goals and objectives and what does it mean for Husky Robotics? So when you think about goals, right? Goals, is, you can define goal as an idea of the future or a desired result or an outcome that a team or a person or group of people envision. And they not only envision that, but they also plan around it and they also commit to achieving it. Um, and we always talk about, uh, in this team, we always talk, talk about begin with end in mind, right? So where do we want to go? What do we want to get to? And what do we want to achieve as a team? And then we build plans and we build um, our, our, our tactics and strategies around those, um, around those goals. Uh, goals represent the decision and commitment we make in order to reach attainment of these objectives and goals that we have set. Um, so individually, as well as as a team, and certainly with the team leads and the captains, we're all sort of committing to getting to a certain goal and getting to attaining those certain goals. Um, so as we get to some of these, the, the, the slides that I am here to share, always remember that when we think about goals, right, it is, we're setting an, a target or we're setting an idea of the future that we're all collectively going to achieve towards, and then we'll put plans in place to achieve that. So as I go to the next slide, right, some examples, what do, you, what do we mean by goals and objectives? And again, goals and objectives are interchangeable, but I'll maybe, maybe try to make a small distinction of what is an objective versus goal, and we'll see if that is, uh, you know, that resonates with the rest of the team. Uh, here or not, but again, many companies, many organizations, many teams use these as interchangeable, 
but I would make a small <laughs> distinction of that as we get through the content today. All right, so goal, again, we said it's an aimed or desired result. Um, for example, um, spending an hour in the gym four days a week, um, you know, that's an example of a goal. Uh, for Huskies, a shooter hitting and target 90% four meters away, that's a very specific goal, right? We're very specifically outlining what do we want our, our shooter to do um, on the robot. So here's some examples of goals and objectives. Again, very interchangeable. Um, you know, um, uh, some some teams call this objective, some teams call it goal. But again, the idea is we're we're setting a very precise outcome that we want to get to. Okay, so what do we mean by goals? And uh, we we also talk about smart goals. Uh, you may have heard about this uh, not only at Huskies but other other places as well. So SMART stands for specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based. Uh, you know, setting a goal um, by itself uh, may sound great when you write it, may sound uh, perfectly, you know, uh, the right thing to do. But unless we look at it with this lens, right, as, is the goal specific, you know, who, what, where, why, and how, unless we define some of these statements for the goal, it's sort of, you know, you don't know at the end of it whether you actually achieved or you didn't achieve it. And I'll give you some examples of that as well. Measurable. We can demonstrate and we can evaluate uh, progress towards meeting the goal, right? Can we, uh, we can actually see did we meet the goal or we didn't meet the goal. Attainable. A goal by itself can be achieved by hard work and dedication. And goal is within our ability to achieve. So as Husky's Robotics, as we're thinking about writing goals, right? Our goals, uh, the way we write it and the way we, uh, you know, share it and communicate it within the, within the teams and by, with each other, uh, we're writing it in a way that it's attainable uh, for this team to achieve. Relevant, right? Goals are relevant and they align with our mission and values. This is another thing that was being sort of, you know, Mr. Gupta was saying that, you know, a lot of organizations, right, they can they can do a lot of things, like right? there's lots of resources, people, um, but if we're doing things that don't align with our missions and our values and our mission uh, and our vision, that's also one of the reasons why many organizations can fail. So the goals have to be relevant to what we are trying to do and what we're trying to achieve. And finally, time-based. And I think Husky's robotics team, more than anything else, understand the value of time, right? You have a certain amount of time to achieve these goals and it's a very specific time window. And, you know, the, the deadlines as well as the competitions as well as by when certain things have to be done is very precise. Um, and, and you really don't have a lot of give as far as the time is concerned. So I think um, this by definition is very important aspect of how Husky's team, robotics team will write the goals and individual teams will write the goals because you do have very strong and very hard deadlines, uh, dates, uh, timeline to, to hit. So I think uh, this, will, this will also be part of uh, uh, the planning cycle as we get through the season. So as I move forward, uh, some other examples of, you know, writing smart goals versus not so smart goals. And then, uh, you know, we'll see a little bit of what the team has written for this year and whether we think those goals are smart or not so smart. Okay, so some examples. I spend an hour in the gym four days a week. You know, pretty, pretty smart. You're talking about what you are trying to achieve. You can actually measure if you, if you did go to the gym four days a week and you just spend an hour, like very measurable, very, very attainable as well, and time-based, it's present tense. So definitely an example of a smart goal. Another one, I take the time to do one extra rep of each practice drill. Again, very specific, very measurable. Not so smart. I will go to the gym more often, right? Kind of indicating the same sentiment and the same thing you want to do, but it's not measurable. So you don't know what does more often mean, right? Was it attained, attained not attained? Can you measure it? not so specific and also a little bit in the future right? you're saying you're, you're putting statements more future tense no time frame for completion hard to understand whether this goal was met or not you know if you ended up going to the gym there and there um, work harder at the practice right doesn't say how hard what does hard even mean in this example 
uh, and what would working hard in this particular example really get to, right? What's the outcome that we're looking for? It's not very specific. So some examples of, right, as you're thinking about, and especially it's very important for the team leads and the captains as we're thinking about writing the goals for the team and, you know, now pre-season as well as when we get into the build season, when you're writing these goals, important to keep this notion of SMART in mind. Um, and especially for, uh, actually it's, it's equally important for both ways. The, the the team captains and the leaders and the members have been on the Huskies Robotics for a few seasons and you're mentoring new members, you're giving direction, you're assigning tasks. Again, think about what you're assigning and is it actually measurable? Is it giving the new members certain direction? This is also a way for uh, you to set the right uh, context for some of the newer members as they're coming onto the team and they're given certain objectives and tasks on the team. Okay. So we go to um, this slide and, uh, you know, here, uh, you know, this is what I understand is the list of goals that the team has put down, major team goals for this season. Maintain and build relationships with the community. Uh, strengthen our robotics family. Maximize productivity. Prepare team for the future and qualify for 2023 World Championship. Again. I don't think there's anything that all of us cannot agree with, right? Uh, it does all sound very good and they're the right goals to have. But if if you just put the lens, um, um, you know, are these really goals or actually more like objectives? And if you think about these goals, which ones of these are really smart goals uh, versus not so smart goals? Not again questioning whether these are the right goals to have. I think these are the right goals to have. But when we think about these, maybe put in the chat um, as you're reading this, does, if we, at the end of the season, would we be able to say, were we able to maintain and build relationships with the community or not? Or were we able to strengthen our robotics family or not? What does the team think? Are there any goals on this list that we can say are SMART goals? Yeah, more or less, I think most of them are um, great ideas and I think the right direction to take. So what we are going to do is um, we're actually gonna turn this into a breakout. So we can take these goals. And I think, as I said, these are the right goals to have. We take these goals and can we think about for each of these, and maybe we can break out um, into five groups. Um, and, you know, and again, before I actually turn it to the breakout, I think one thing I would like to say the fifth item, qualify for 2023 World Championship, I think is a little bit of a smart goal, right? We are, we are, we are putting down um, some measurable outcome there. We're putting down a timeline there. Uh, we think it's attainable. Uh, we think it's measurable. Uh, we think it's very specific. So I think the fourth, the, the fifth one, qualify for 2023 World Championship, is smart goal. Maybe we can make it even more precise, but I think it's it, it, it's a smart goal. But the other four, I think we can take the time as part of our breakout to see, is there more elements we can add to writing these goals that will make them smart, right? So for example, maintain and build relationships with the community. Can we think of ideas? Can we think of elements to say, well, how how many of these things we're going to do? Are these events? Are these activities we'll do with the community? You know, how would we measure whether we're successful in maintaining and building relationships or not? So maybe during the breakout, we can take five minutes um, and look at each of these goals. Maybe we divide them between the breakouts and uh, come back with some examples of how we would rewrite them with adding the elements of SMART goals. So Mr. Schmidt, back to you. All right, so I've got new breakout rooms created. So I have five rooms. So your room number corresponds to your goal. 
So screenshot these goals if you need them, these five at least. I'll put that in the chat, chat as well, in case that's helpful. Um, I'm sorry, Ms. Kyle, how long did you say? Was it five minutes or long? Five minutes, yeah, I think five minutes. Okay. All right, I've got that set up right. We've got new rooms. Here we go. All right, welcome back, everybody. All right. Um, I think what we can do is take the next few minutes and have the one person from each breakout room sort of talk about what their conversation was like and how did they think about writing this, rewriting this, or enhancing this as a smart goals. Maybe we go with uh, breakout room one: maintain and build relationships with the community. Um, so we changed it up. Uh, we changed it up. Um, it became a it became a bit longer, but within that, it like fulfilled each of the requirements. Um, so we kind of changed it to um, have members participate in eight hours of service to organizations within the community and work with five new groups uh, prior to um, first competition of build season. Okay, very 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 good very specific and measurable. Um, and you also have the time element in there, which is, you know, we're talking about before the build season. So I think that's great. Capture this because I think uh, Mr. Schmidt has, a, has an announcement to make after we are done with the breakout. So capture this, I think we'll come back to this. Okay, we can go to the next uh, breakout room, strengthen our robotics family. Okay, so that was my breakout room. That was breakout room two. And the main way we attacked this was we found it very hard to be, it wasn't very specific and it was pretty hard to measure, but our revised goal is that we wanna see a 15% increase in people going to our events. Mm -hmm. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, I think, um, you know, if you have the baseline of what it is looking like right now, then we say, okay, 15% improvements to, team members attending events and so on. I think that's a great uh, specificity that we've added uh, to this goal. So I think that's great. And it aligns with the overall mission and vision of the team. So pretty good. Okay, the third breakout room, maximize productivity. Yeah, uh, we said uh, maximize productivity by completing all of uh, our tasks in each given sprint. Oh, very nice, very nice. So basically what we're saying is every sprint, whatever we set ourselves out to do in that sprint, we're gonna do 100% of all those activities and tasks. So that's a pretty good yeah. and pretty effective, uh, pretty effective goal to have. Yeah. Awesome. Um, in the next breakout room, prepare team for the future. Um, so we said that we prepare team for the future by uh, documenting our institutional knowledge each year. Um, and we were kind of like going back and forth about like measure, like the measured part, but like how to, how we would actually measure it. Um, we were like throwing some ideas about like maybe like measuring like more like the qual, like somehow measuring the quality over like the quantity of like a documentation, but we were kind of like still discussing that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I think there could be some elements of, right, uh, if, if you're thinking about, you know, building institutional knowledge that can be passed on from one season to the other and make it easy for new team members to, you know, basically inherently get that knowledge when they join the team. You know, we can think about other ways to make it more specific, like training sessions or workshops and things like that. So that's a great addition to have. Um, but at least the team is thinking about, you know, having a certain uh, objective uh, of, uh, you know, building this institutional knowledge. So I think that'd be a great addition to the goal here. Uh, and then finally, uh, qualify for 2023 World Championship. Do we have anyone from the break? Anyone? Yes. We all had great um, points that I want to get the students to jump in. Andrew? Franklin? Oh, yeah, I can share. Um, oh, Andrew's internet is breaking out. Um, we were saying that uh, 
to make it like a little bit more measurable and specific, we could say that we wanted to qualify and attend the world championships by either robot or impact. And we were still discussing when the time ran out if we wanted to add the and make it to our the playoffs in our world's bracket. That's, that's great. That's great. Uh, I, I'm just amazed that, uh, you know, we took these five statements and in five minutes, you know, we were able to come up with massive improvement. I would say very specific and, and great improvements to some of these statements. I make it very, very real and very, um, you know, measurable and realistic for the team members. So I think that's a pretty great addition. I think we don't want to lose all the great conversation we just had in the breakout rooms. So if all the breakout room team members or maybe one person from each breakout room can just do not lose your notes, <laughs> keep your notes. And, uh, and also the statements that you have written down uh, in terms of the new definition of the goals or new description of the goals, please keep that because we would need to have that um, um, in the coming days. So please save that and towards the end, We'll, we'll figure out how we capture all of this. Okay, in the interest of time, I will move forward. So well, we talked about goals, right? And then then what, right? We, we write all these nice goals. You know, this is really great because it's all pre-season. We're writing it down. This is all pretty good. But then we have to turn this into an actual plan, right? Goal without a plan is just a wish. Um, and we don't want to just have this as a wish list. We actually want to achieve all these goals of the team. So <clears throat> coming back to uh, what we were discussing last week, right? So I just want to connect this back to all the different workshops that we had uh, as part of our leadership series. Uh, Jubin, uh, in the last session, talked about uh, how we convert, you know, our goals and objectives into actual plans, right? Actual um, tasks that we would be uh, taking, undertaking as a team to achieve these goals. And so I'm just, I just want the team to reflect back to some of the learnings that we had from our last week's uh, leadership series session or leadership workshop, which was very focused on project management. In Husky's Robotics, we follow the Agile methodology. So remember the takeaways from Agile, from Scrum, and how we continue to run these different sprints and then there are specific, um, uh, you know, tasks that get put on each sprint. And then we review the sprint. We do the activities in the sprint. Then we look at where we end up at the end of the sprint. And then we keep continuously improving. Right? So the sprint planning is very critical. And this is how the team as a whole will continue to make progress towards achieving some of these goals that we have set for ourselves. And, then, and by the way, the goals that we have set for ourselves are not simple goals. They're very, very complex goals that we have set for ourselves. So this is how we break those bigger goals down into individual things that we achieve on a weekly basis and uh, and then drive towards achieving those big goals for the team. I also want to call out that in the last week's session, uh, the team also talked about, Mr. MG talked about failure mode analysis. And so remember the takeaways uh, when you're thinking about um, setting up tasks and objectives and how you're executing uh, against a project plan for each of the sprints. Um, remember uh, to identify and analyze uh, what are some of the potential failure modes uh, that the team can encounter in various parts of the robot or various parts of the system. Uh, and then what these failures, what are the effects of these failures to the overall system, right? What, what could it lead to um, if these failure modes were hit? And then, you know, what, what would be the overall effect on the overall system. And then how can the team, individual person, individual team, uh, sub-teams, and the entire team, right? How can we avoid or mitigate the effects of these critical failures? Um, so keep these uh, lessons in mind. Of course, all the materials and recordings are available to you, but just keep these in mind as you're thinking about converting your goals into plan and then moving forward. Also, just again, reminding you, that uh, yeah, now that we have we're talking about goals and then specific tasks and sprint plans, don't forget overarchingly all the different workshops that we had as part of our leadership series, uh, starting from the servant leadership conversation, um, 
Mr. Gupta talked about strong culture. Uh, strong culture is the strongest indicator of success. Again, as we said earlier in the session, we don't write, usually the teams don't write down the culture. A right? culture is something that you embody, something that you live uh, every day and you demonstrate every day. Um, and teams that are very, very successful have really strong culture. Uh, we listen to each other. We respond with empathy and compassion. And we explain and we demonstrate and we guide and enable and help others grow. And the other uh, key principle that uh, this team always follows is we bring others along, right? We have a, uh, we have some existing team members. We have new team members. So how do we continue to follow the uh, learnings and the guidelines we, we had in the servant leadership to really build a strong culture in the team? Uh, again, crucial conversations begin with the end in mind. Learn to look and make it safe. And finally, uh, crucial accountability, right? Remember, um, we talked about uh, fundamental attribution error uh, and the six sources of influence where their motivational influence, influences are based on ability, uh, making the invisible visible. So again, just reflecting back on some of the learnings that we've had as part of our leadership series, these are all things when we get into the into the build season and we're in you know deep conversations and deep design discussions and building the robot, some of these things are going to pop up in different parts. Um, and, and how does the team embody these learnings uh, is going to drive towards, the, you know, is really going to be a fundamental um, input into how well this team does uh, at the end of uh, the season. And I also want to, uh, again, uh, reflect, uh, you know, continuous improvement is better than delayed perfection. Um, perfection is, you know, I think we can always do better. We can always continue to improve. But one of the things that I would love for the team to take away is that perfection is the enemy of done, right? We don't want to keep waiting for the perfect robot. We want to continuously improve and continuously drive towards our goals um, and, you know, continue to have improved, Im you know, continue to improve the processes, continue to improve our systems so that we keep getting better and better as a team and keep making the robot better and better. Um, so again, that's why we have some of these things like prototyping and so on, so we can understand how overall the system is improving. Um, looking ahead, uh, how do we continue to grow? Um, so again, I think this team does an awesome job uh, of embracing ownership mindset. What does ownership mindset means? Everybody's an owner, right? We don't say this is not my job. Of course, you have your specific tasks and things that you're supposed to do. But if you're seeing something, if you are um, part of the team, right, make sure that we're bringing others along and uh, we, we're embracing the ownership mindset and we don't think about this is not my job, I don't want to do this or I don't do this. Uh, if you don't do this, bring somebody along and then let them handle it or at least take it to the right person on the team. Um, senior members of the team mentor new members. And I think this is already happening. But as, as we get into some of the very, uh, tough and challenging weeks ahead. Uh, this this is going to be very crucial. Um, continuously contributing and providing suggestions to improve the team processes. You know, am I leaving the team in a better place than when I joined the team? Uh, what can I be doing right now that's best for the team? Again, from the servant leadership mindset. Uh, removing bottlenecks for others. What can I do to make somebody else's job easier? Um, did I see something? Did I learn something that I can tell others uh, so they can they don't have to uh, reinvent the wheel or they don't have to discover the same problem themselves? Right? Can I do something to help others? Um, and then team retrospective. I think this is one of the things that is new this season is to do this keep fix try after every event to understand and reflect and see what worked, what didn't work. Um, I think this is a great addition to the team. Um, to keep this continuous learning and continuous improvement mindset going and learning from every event and then saying, how can I improve, right? What can we do more of? What do we need to let go of, right? So again, improving overall the team uh, and, and taking it to the, uh, to the right direction. Um, and we're doing the same thing from a workshop series perspective, right? How can we continuously improve, continuously add uh, to these discussions? Final thoughts, uh, right? As you see, we're not done. Uh, we're just getting started. And what do we do with the goals is way, way, way more important than just setting the goals, right? We don't want to be the team that just wrote 
fancy, awesome goals, and then it just got dropped to the floor, right? We want to embody these. So think through what are Husky's vision, mission, values, how are we communicating them? How are we displaying them? How are we embodying them? And that all kind of sets the culture of the team. And then, you know, then we get into the specific tactics and strategies. So how do we continue to drive towards um, the overall objective of the team? Um, finally, I just want to say, as Mr. Schmidt also mentioned, uh, there is a session coming up next week. Uh, so that's a dedicated session facilitated by captains and mentors uh, to further develop and communicate uh, our whatever we talked about today, right? Our vision, mission, goals. Whole team is welcome to attend. Please come. Uh, we had some great ideas already on the discussion today. Uh, and that's also why I don't want the team to just uh, throw away all your notes. <laughs> Please save them both when we did the breakout for vision and mission, but also the breakout that we did for goals, all the notes that you wrote down uh, or you scribbled, uh, please save them because I think we'll need them for the next week's discussion. Um, and then just a call out for project leaders. As you continue to work with your teams, you know, think about writing your goals as smart goals. Um, and then when you write them as smart goals, I know that the plans that you'll write to achieve those goals will automatically uh, be you know, tailored uh, so that you, you drive to those outcomes, right? And you get those outcomes. Uh, when the goals are vague, then our plans also become vague, right? And we're, we think we're doing the right thing, but we, we, there's no way for us to measure it. And there's no way for us to know if we're gonna hit the goal or not. But if you have smart goals, then the steps and the tactics and the plan that you'll write would automatically contribute towards achieving those smart goals. Uh, all right, go Huskies. All right, wonderful. And I, I did just want to reiterate um, Ms. Kama's point there at the end. Uh, we are finishing a few minutes early, so please use that time. Capture your uh, what you all discussed in your breakout rooms. Capture your own personal thoughts. Save that, set that aside. Bring it to next week's leadership workshop. It will really jumpstart the, the discussion um, and get us going as well. So. Um, Huge thank you um, to, to Ms. Kama, and Mr. Gupa, Gupta um, for, for leading us uh, um, this evening. Um, and uh, thank you so much and hope to see everybody next week as well. Yes, breadcrumbs. Yes, leave the, <laughs> capture those breadcrumbs for next week. Excellent. <laughs> and, and as soon as you're done with that, go to the 2022 Leadership Workshop Series Keep Fix Try document and uh, add some more some more thoughts we've got some really great stuff uh, up through crucial accountability uh, would love to see some for project management failure analysis goals and visioning uh, that we just had tonight uh, that would be great to capture that while you're thinking as well and i will put that in the google chat so that you don't have to search through old messages to find it so make it a little bit easier <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody.